seen more and more videos like this lately of people clearly using AI to pass all their assignments and not actually doing any studying for themselves. And it had me thinking, like, what is the point in university these days given how important and widespread AI has become? So I think that university isn't just the education itself, but it's like a bundle of different things. So it's the credentials that you receive, it's the courses that you do, it's the friends that you make and the like social aspects of university, it's the fact you get to be independent, and for some it's to do with the research that you might be involved in. And I'm going to go through all of these, like give my thoughts on them, and hopefully you can decide whether it's worth it for you or not. And of course you won't find all the answers here because like that debate is like many hours long itself, but hopefully this gives you some guidance. So I think probably the biggest reason people apply to university is the fact that it's a credentialing agency, like it gives out degrees and credentials to people in society. And the reality is that most people in society are pretty lazy and they don't want to do much thinking for themselves. So they use like mental shortcuts to be able to like come to conclusions without them having to think so hard themselves. And that's what many employers do, where they basically look at what university you went to and use it as a proxy for whether you're able to do the job that's required or not. Even though you may have many people who can do the same job but haven't been to university or may not have been to as good of a university. So basically, university awards these credentials in return or like after you study there. And the reason it's like more credential focused is because if you imagine two cases, so like case A, someone goes to university, they make 100k after graduating. Graduates often make more than non-graduates and in case B, someone doesn't go to university and they make 50k a year instead. Now, let's say hypothetically you did 80% of university and then you dropped out before you completed the last 20%. You would have not graduated and you would make, you would not make 80% of the difference, which would be 90k a year. You would make like closer to 50k because it's not actually about the content itself. So a uh, possible explanation could be two things. It could be the fact that you learn most of what you needed to do in the last 20%, which we all know is not true. Or it's the fact that employers care more about the fact that you actually graduated than what you actually learned at that university. And I think this is especially true given that 50% of people don't do a job in relation to whatever they study at university. Now where AI comes into this is the fact that many people in university if they're not actually studying for the exams and they're just getting AI to do most of the reasoning and thinking and studying for them instead, then they're going to be less qualified than people 10, 15 years ago. And also people will be getting into university more easily and there will be more people who are wanting to go to university because it's seen as being so easy that you can just go there, do get AI to do all the work for you and so forth. And I think it means that the credential itself of university will slowly diminish over time because people would be like, oh, graduates from X university 15, 20 years ago were stronger or better in quality than graduates nowadays because everyone who's, everyone who's graduating nowadays has mostly used AI to graduate in some way or another. But of course, this depends entirely on what you're studying and why you're studying because some degrees at some universities are worth more than other degrees at other universities. And by worth, I'm talking about like an economic worth of like a computer science degree is like more economically like valuable to society or worth more than like a English or philosophy degree. But I guess like an English or philosophy degree is probably more like sp spiritually worthy to you internally in some way. Uh, it's pretty hard to evaluate what's worth more. So the next part of university is the courses. And I think it's very unlikely that you will go to university and learn something that you cannot find on the internet basically. Like pretty much everything you're learning can be found on the internet in some way. So it's like either two values of university come from that. One is the fact that you actually learn in like a curriculum and you get guidance and support from like the university itself to help you learn the material, whether that's in the form of like tutors or mentoring or like professors like answering your questions and so forth compared to people who are just learning online. So where the value in university used to come from is the fact that you get extra mentorship or like professors can answer your questions or you have tutors or mentors and so forth. You have all this extra structure around what you're learning that will like make your learning more beneficial or it will really help. And unless you're doing like really lab heavy work such as like doing a doctor like training to be a doctor or like a chemist or something, if you have all the facilities and all the information online then it's much more likely that you will have a better experience learning online thanks to AI nowadays. For example, ChatGPT likely will be explaining things to you much better than your professor is able to. And I think in a few months and even a few years, it will get like much better than most of the significant or like best teachers out there. So I think the final value of university in that sense will probably be the structure that it gives you around courses in the sense like it provides you a structure for like teaching you, we're gonna learn this and this week, this and that week. And you can basically like in some cases you don't even have to go to lectures, you can just learn it yourself. Or you can go to lectures and it kind of gives you structure in your own life. I know some people are very good at like having discipline 
to learn something themselves over an extended period of time, and some people may not be as disciplined in that sense. But I think given how quickly you are now able to learn things and like in a very efficient way, thanks to tools like ChatGPT, maybe it will be less expected of you to know as concretely or like in detail about whatever field for whatever job you're doing. Because you can kind of learn it on the fly or you can like learn it thanks to a job and the job or company will probably have internal tools that help you master that particular field. And probably the percentage of people who are doing things related to what they study at university, I think currently it's now 50%, it will probably be even higher in the sense that more people will be graduating and doing jobs that are unrelated to what they study at university before. I think another pretty big component of university is the research component itself. So as an undergraduate, you may be able to get research opportunities that you do over the summer, or you may want to do a master's and then a PhD and continue going down the university like academia route. And I think what you will find is that your research is often limited by whether you can get a grant for that particular thing that you want to research, or whether you can just get the funding in general. In many cases, you're not able to research whatever the hell you want, and if you are, then you're incredibly fortunate in that sense. And for the last couple of decades, academia has been experiencing the whole thing of like the replication crisis, where it's like half of studies, it actually depends on which field you're looking at, but like half of studies don't replicate at all. And there are like 3 million research papers published every year, and if half of them aren't even replicating, and many like hundreds of thousands aren't even being read because they're just churning out research for the sake of research, then ultimately you may end up in a really good environment where like the research is actually valued, you get to research what you want, you have the funding and opportunities available, or you may end up in a more toxic environment where you're just publishing papers for the sake of publishing papers, you're not researching what you want, you end up like altering or modifying projects in some way to be able to fit in with whatever grants that your lab or university is applying to. In one case, I met a guy who was doing a machine learning PhD at Oxford for a lab, and I asked him how the PhD was going, and he basically said he doesn't really have anything to do in the sense that the lab that he was doing the PhD for, they basically applied to like a grant program, which said as part of getting this grant for your lab, you have to accept one machine learning AI related PhD. And because a lab wasn't really doing any machine learning AI related stuff anyway, they just came up with some clever way of like introducing AI that they didn't actually need for their work. And then they had this PhD student come in and then in a couple of months the PhD student realized that they weren't actually doing anything valuable and the professor just didn't need them and their like supervisor just didn't really care about what they're doing. And I think like he was planning on dropping out when I talked to him about this. So this entirely comes down to whether or not you're able to research what you want, what kind of lab you're researching for, and also what kind of field you're researching in. Some fields of course will be much better funded and they have like more exploration opportunities, whereas other fields may not be quite as well funded. But I think going forth, like Gemini introduced a research-esque feature, ChatGPT added a deep research feature, which apparently is really good. I haven't tried it yet, but a lot of people are raving about it. And I think that given many AI tools are introducing these research-related features, it's likely that you'll find many independent researchers or researchers who are kind of loosely affiliated with universities who are doing like really groundbreaking research with the help of AI in the sense like AI sort of like helped them unlock the various connections and discoveries and so forth. So I think there might be a rise in like independent researchers who are doing really good work. But that also means that there will be a rise in research which is just complete slop because it was entirely written by AI as well. So I'm not sure if that really good research would end up being lost in the noise or not. But of course there's some kinds of research that AI will not be able to do yet at all. For example, like if you're working in a lab or you have to do like physical things, I don't think AI ha robotics have gotten to a point where they're able to do the like robotic um, like experiments for you. So it seems that a lot of research inspired by AI is basically being able to coalesce and like combine and connect ideas between like thousands or tens of thousands of different papers and then coming up with something new based on that existing research rather than doing entirely new research itself. So what this probably means for you is that if you really want to do research, then you have to find a way to be complementary with AI in the future. And I think that might make you a better researcher overall than many of the researchers who are much older and may not know how to use AI quite as well. But I guess in some research circles where AI is really frowned upon or whatever because like some old professor had a bad experience with it, you might actually have to hide the fact that you used AI in some way to be able to make the connections that you did. So another big aspect of university is a social aspect. And university is a place where many people around the country and even around the world will come into one place and like become friends, exchange ideas. And basically you will find many people who are on a similar wavelength to you. And many people that you may also disagree with. And I think throughout history, this has kind of been an important part of universities themselves. In the sense that when you look at many like independence movements and like political parties and movements throughout history, 
They have usually arised from universities or students because universities and students in those universities have exchanged so many ideas and are like, it's a culmination of or like boiling pots of many different ideas. So what this meant for me is that I became much less arrogant because I met people who were smarter and just as smart as me, and many people who were smart in like very different domains to what I was. So it like really humbles you down if you are particularly arrogant right now. And it also just means that you make like really strong and good friendships because many people say like this friends that they've stayed in touch with throughout their adulthood are usually the friends that they had from university. It's also a really good place where you can find collaborators for various projects in the future. So you can start a company and then you can remember like you have a particular university friend who's really good at like, I don't know, engineering and you need engineering expertise in your like company. And then you can just invite them along or you may be on the receiving end of this where you will make friends at university and then many people like you graduate with will go on to do like pretty incredible things in the future. And provided you made friends with interesting people during university, you may be involved in many of these like interesting opportunities that they're now doing because they invite you as a collaborator or they like give you a reference or various other things. And I think that is like much harder to replicate with AI, just like the social connections and networks that you get from university itself. And I think a final point worth mentioning is that many people find their life partners and like people that they get married to in the future in university itself. That doesn't mean they don't find it outside of university, but many people do in university. And I think in many people's cases or experiences, it's much easier during university because you're surrounded by so many more people your age and people who are on a similar wavelength to you and so forth than you are just out in the real world. I think a final related aspect of this is that university is the first time many people in their lives are fully independent, especially if they're studying away from home. And they have to do the laundry themselves, they have to cook themselves in some cases. They have to just like do all the adult responsibilities themselves. And then they have to like navigate how the world works and they have to like apply for opportunities and then they might get rejected. And they have to have to get used to getting rejected from like jobs and internships that they applied for. And I think that generally university gives you like a chance to have like a deep understanding of the world and just like explore the world in like a safe controlled environment in the sense that in university like you often have support networks or like your university advisor or like counselors or and tutoring staff or something that will help you if you have any difficulties or struggles whilst you're trying to like be independent and learn how to be an adult. I think a final small aspect is the financial aspect of it really depends on which country you're from like if you go to a country where university is really cheap or free it, you may have to evaluate it differently. If you go to one where student loans are pretty easy like government wise for example in the UK you don't have to repay your student loans until you make like 25 or 27,000 pounds and then you only pay 9% above whatever you make above their threshold. So it's more like a graduate tax and it is like student loans and I think they get cleared after 30 years or so. So it really depends on which country you're from. So I can't really like comment on this, but what I can comment on and like firmly believe is that you don't have to go to university to be successful in life. There are many cases where people have been successful in life and they haven't gone to university. And there are many cases where people haven't been successful in life and they have gone to like a really good university. And a quote that I really like on this is school was always a downside protection. You have to find the upside all on your own. You can't expect that going to university will automatically make you millions or something in the future. You have to find those upside or like big opportunities yourself and you can't rely on university to do that for you. Sure, it may help in some ways because you might meet people who will introduce you to such opportunities and help you get connected to relevant people in the future, but it may not necessarily always be the case. You can also find those people online or just by doing impressive things and posting about it online. So would I have still gone to university in the age of AI? For me personally, like there was no AI or like large language models that were popular during my time at university, so it's entirely without AI. But if I did, then I'd probably use like, because university is less about the crit uh, content that you learn and more about the credentials, I would focus more on the credential aspects and the network building aspect, and then using AI to make like my studying much easier for the other aspects of university. It really depends on what you're doing. If you're like being a doctor, then you probably shouldn't like use AI to pass all your exams and not actually learn medicine because that's dangerous for yourself and for patients in the future. But if you're going to be one of the like 50% people who don't do a job related to whatever they study during university, you'd still want to develop like more useful skills in university like critical thinking and like reasoning and solving hard problems. And you may want to use AI to basically help you through all the like random crap that you have to do where you don't really see like any benefit or like fruition or like any useful thing coming from it. And then to spend that time that you would have saved by like finding other opportunities, like doing internships, networking, exploring independence as an adult, and yeah, generally just relying more on the credential itself because like it's pretty clear in society that people care less about what you studied and the exact nature of what you studied 
and it's more about the credential or like the signaling aspect because most people are lazy as I said before and they want to take shortcuts in life and one of those shortcuts is basically looking at where you studied what you studied and then determining how capable you are or how smart you are. But of course, if you're still not sure, I would recommend watching other videos. There's a really good video that I have linked in the description, which is like a two hour debate between, well, it's not exactly a debate, but in between two guys talking about the various aspects of university. And also in many cases, you can just apply anyway. And if you don't like it, or you do one year there, then you can drop out and just like find another opportunity or a job. For example, like one of my friends, he went to university. He was really talented. I think he was like six, top six, top seven in the year or something. And then he did an internship and he really liked the internship and he couldn't imagine himself going back to university and the internship offered him like a return job. And then it, instead of completing like the full three years, he dropped out after two years and then just like worked at the place for the internship full time because he just didn't really enjoy university himself. Or even you can apply for university and then apply deferred so you can have one year where you kind of like do your own thing and like figure out what you want to do in life. And then you can either like not go to university or you can then go to university and maybe you can even take a gap year during university. But I think in many cases, people are more comfortable taking a gap year or dropping out if they know exactly what they're going to do during that time. For example, like in my friend's case, he got a return offer from the company that he did an internship for. And he asked if he could use a return offer one year early and then just drop out instead. And they were fine with that. They didn't require a degree from him. And he probably wouldn't have dropped out if he didn't get a return offer. But yeah, I think university is worth it in the age of AI, mostly because of like how society is structured and like the signaling credentials and stuff. But you shouldn't be able to expect to get all the success that you want in life through university alone. And you have to find that like upside of success at yourself or on your own. And I think there are still many valuable things that you can get uni from university, such as like the social aspects, like connections for the future, being able to be independent and work on projects, and also just like be an adult for probably the first time in life.